Hey guys, Jackie here. Now that Persona 4 has been finally ported to PC, you know what that means. The PS Vita is finally dead. Kidding aside, the Persona series has been a main staple in the JRPG genre for over 25 years that blends it together with a turn-based RPG system and life simulator, creating a blend of a slice-of-life dungeon crawling hybrid. So it's really amazing that one of the games in the series is finally being ported to the PC since before this, the only way to play Golden was from the PS Vita or from an emulator which is still in early development. Heck, if the reception goes well, Atlas might even start considering porting the previous games or even some of the SMT titles to other consoles aside from it being a strictly Sony exclusive from now on in the future. But if you're a bit hesitant about the series or never heard of it until now, which I highly doubt, here's a basic overview for these three mainline games to help you understand the concept and try to convince you to play this amazing series. The Persona series follows a group of high school students in various settings around modern Japan, with each story taking place over the course of a year during which we will attend school, making friends, or fighting monsters while also tackling real-world issues varying from social to political or even philosophical issues with the help of their personas. Each game all starting with a main silent protagonist who will start attending in high school. There you will meet your new classmates who you would befriend and would soon all gain mystical powers known as a persona, a physical manifestation of a user's personality, used to fight monsters known as shadows, with you being quite special since you have the ability to make and use other personas than your own. But what made the games unique from the other JRPGs has to be the style and presentation, with each game sporting a certain style from their obvious colors, music, and characters, all fitting into their respective games, making them all iconic and memorable, especially the music. Ooh, the music. Uh, But aside from that, the other half of the game is the turn-based combat, with all of them taking place in a dungeon-like scenario where you encounter shadows and reach the very end to confront the boss of the level, with the gameplay being that of Pokemon, I guess, since you switch out different personas with the right elements to be effective, making them really important since it also deals a lot of damage and stuns the enemy as well, giving you the opportunity to do an all-out attack where all your party members attack the enemies at the same time, dealing some good AoE damage. As well as the social link system that has become the norm nowadays for JRPGs, but back then it was the very first of its kind. So important in fact that it sums up the other half of the game's identity. If you are not aware of what it is, it is a game mechanic that encourages the player to interact with the people around you in the game, increasing their bonds with you and giving you upgrades to help you make better personas, or in P5's case, also serves a lot of perks to make you stronger in the game, making the game feel fresh by breaking up the repetition from balancing out of the combat with your social life. It gives a layer of strategy on who to hang out with, as well as giving you an incentive to hang out with the people you like or dislike, those who you would have probably otherwise ignored without the system with all of them having full fleshed out stories, tackling their own personal problems, and having their own arcs with a satisfying conclusion. All varying in quality, with some really good ones considering the fact that it's all optional. 
The stories of each game all starts out quite small, with it eventually building up after every chapter, gradually rising up into epic proportions, especially in the last third of the game, with each game having its own story to tell, with strong themes and messages that will remain with you for a very long time. From Tree's symbolism of death and the philosophical views about life itself, Four's persistence about reaching the truth and accepting it no matter what, and Five's message about breaking away from the standards and norms viewed from society to be yourself. Each all having powerful themes that are still relatable to this day, with all giving off a timeless feel, with each title becoming a true classic. Oh yeah